What a day. The Deep Seek team is back and they are absolutely crushing it with the official launch of the Deep Seek R1 model, which is no longer in its light version. This is an insanely powerful open source model that matches OpenAI's O1 model in various performance benchmarks and it is even outperforming GPT-4 Omni and even Claude 3.5 Sonnet on numerous benchmarks. It is fully licensed under MIT and you can already access the API and start chatting with DeepSeek R1 directly on their website. You can also install this with LM Studio as well as Olama. But what we're going to be doing is showcasing a full-on benchmark test of DeepSeek R1 and I'm also going to be releasing a video that showcases the coding capabilities of this model with a coding agent later on today so definitely stay tuned. But that's not all. This DeepSeek model is something that also has been introduced with the distilled version of the R1 model which is going to make it a bit more accessible and efficient where they have different versions up to six different models that you can access which is a huge step for the open source community and it basically allows anyone to easily access the models. Now let's get a bit more technical with the performance of this model. Currently it's the best open source model that's available and it shows glimpse of AGI which is just truly insane. It's 30 times cheaper than O1 as the DeepSeek API is 96.4% cheaper than ChatGPT and there's also 128k context on support. But take a look at this bar graph which showcases how the DeepSeek R1 is outcompeting the O1 on various benchmarks. And in certain areas, it's on par with it, whether that's related to coding tasks, math, or even MMLU. Before we get started, I got a huge new update. This is where I've launched a new newsletter. This is something that's going to be sent out on a weekly basis. And it's essentially going to be updating you on the latest AI advancements comparison of different large language models, AI news, as well as ranking different AI agents. So definitely go ahead and subscribe to this because you don't want to miss out on free AI news. When compared to Sonnet 3.5, DeepSeek version 3, and even GPT-4 Omni, you can see that it greatly beats all of these models in mostly every benchmark test. Whether that's in plain English, you have coding, math, multilingual, it is outpacing it in almost everything. And it's just crazy to think that we have an open source model that is fully outpacing proprietary uh, state-of-the-art models like Sonnet 3.5 as well as GPT-4 Omni. This is a small startup in China that was able to develop this model, which is just awesome. And to showcase an additional test, it was actually benchmarked on Aider, which showcased that the DeepSeek R1 scored a 57% on Aider's polyglot benchmark, which is ranking number two behind O1, being significantly cheaper and better than Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Now, what we're going to be doing is showcasing a couple of benchmark tests, and we're basically going to be assessing it in various areas to showcase its capabilities. And this is basically the different prompts that we're going to be assessing this model upon, from coding all the way to different reasoning prompts, the mathematics, and so much more. And say if you wanted to install this locally, you can install this with Olama quite quickly or you can go over to the model card on Olama and then you can basically install the version that you would want. So if you want the 7 billion parameter DeepSeek R1 model, you can go ahead, copy this command and then you can go into your command prompt and paste it in after you have Olama installed and running locally. To get started, head over to DeepSeek's chatbot, which I'll leave a link to, as well as all the other links that I use in today's video in the description below. And you want to go ahead and turn on the DeepThink button to activate the DeepSeek R1 model. Now, for the people who do not know what DeepThink basically means, it's essentially an advanced reasoning MOE model that's trained with supervised fine tuning and reinforcement learning. So it's similar to the O1, but it's an open source alternative that takes longer to get you the responses, and it uses thought the thought process to basically get you the best logical, mathematical, and problem-solving answers. So let's get started. I'm going ahead and having it fulfill the first prompt, which is to create a front-end for a modern note-taking app. And I told it so that it is functional and where you can add sticky notes. So it has went along and created this base structure of the sticky note app where you can add these sticky notes. And then it's basically where it is going to allow you to Add in random notes like create a YouTube video on DeepSeek R1. And then you can go ahead and you can add a different color to this. You can add multiple different notes. And essentially, 
this is a sticky note app where you can add different tasks to your list. So in this case, it was able to easily build this with a DeepSeek R1 code generator. And essentially, this is definitely deemed the pass from my test. Now, what I was just trying to see is how well it is in terms of developing a front end design, as well as how well it is in terms of uh, coding it out quite quickly, as well as the layout of the note taking app. So let's now move on to the next prompt now, which focuses on a math problem solving question. So we can go back to the DeepSeek chatbot. We can go ahead and send this in. This is where I'm asking it. If a train travels at 60 miles per hour for 2.5 hours, then it increases its speed to 75 miles per hour for the next 1.5 hours. What is the total distance traveled? And the correct answer is 262.5 miles. And this model ends up giving me the correct answer. And not only does it give me the correct answer, but it focuses on the two segments and it basically uses the correct uh, arithmetic and problem solving solution for this. Now, next up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna assess the model on generating an SVG design for a butterfly shape. Now, this is something that has been quite tricky for a lot of models. And essentially, we're gonna try to see how well this model is in terms of generating SVG code, where it produces this functional SVG code, and it also showcases how well it is in terms of providing symmetrical basic shapes, as well as adhering to simplicity based off of the requirements I had. And there we go, we have gotten the code. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and then I'm gonna go over to this SVG online viewer and paste it in. And look at that. This is actually quite surprising because I've never seen something generated uh, this symmetrical as well as something that looks exactly like a butterfly. So this is definitely deemed the pass, and I'm quite surprised to see that it was able to generate something that nice. Next up is a prompt that focuses on arithmetic uh, progression. And essentially, it is going to try to evaluate the model's knowledge in arithmetic progression over different uh, sorts of formulas. And essentially, we're trying to see if it solves for n, and we're trying to see if it ends up with 40 employees, which is definitely correct. So this is definitely looking like it is quite powerful, and it is definitely a smart model. So let's give this a pass. The next prompt is having it generate the game of life. And in this case, I had it simply paste it in the prompt and it was able to think for 19 seconds and provide this answer. So let's see if this is functional. But essentially, this is where I'm assessing it in terms of its ability to write Python code for complex algorithms. So I've copied the code into a Python file and let's now see if this is functional. There we go. We have the game of life within our terminal and we can see that this model does a great job in writing the Python code for this algorithm. And in this case, it doesn't just provide numbers for the automation or the simulation of this game. It provides this grid based uh, automation and you can see that it is doing a better job than many of the other models are capable of doing with this certain prompt. So this is definitely deemed a pass. Next up, we're going to have it write a Python script to simulate an online store checkout system. And the system should have these following requirements where it is able to calculate the tax, provide discounts and include error handling, as well as allowing users to input items and their quantities. So let's go ahead into the chatbot and send in this prompt. Now, this is basically going to write the script but it's assessing how well it is in terms of programming system designs, as well as uh, taking in the different requirements I had sent in and writing the script to adhering to those requirements. So let's see if it's able to output the desired programming script. And clearly from just a bird's eye perspective of looking at this code, you can see that it takes in and defines the available items with its quantity, as well as the price. You can then take in the item input and then have it so that it then assesses and calculates the total cost. It also applies the VAT, which is 13% for the tax and it discounts for orders over a hundred dollars. So in this case, it was able to calculate and write the script for all these different requirements that set. So in this case, this is definitely deemed a pass. Now, moving on to the next prompt, it is focusing on logical deduction, and it's basically going to assess the model to solve deductive reasoning puzzles. And I essentially, I wanted to identify the truth tellers versus the liars and resolve this contradiction logically. So we have three types of people. You have the knights, you have the knaves, as well as the spies. And essentially, there's different people uh, that always tell the truth 
or the people who can always tell the lie. And surprisingly, the model comes out with the correct answer, where it states that Alex is the knave, Blair is the knight, and Casey is the spy, which is 100% correct. And in this case, it was able to logically uh, resolve the contradictions, and it was able to get the correct answer. So we can go ahead and give this a pass. Now, next up, we're going to have it analyze the following text, and it's basically... Uh, having it summarized through the text that I provide. So we're going to go ahead into a new chat and then paste in the context that I provided and we're going to assess how well this model is in terms of identifying the key arguments, condense the information as well as output concise summaries with relevant details. So in this case, I'm providing it this case, which is approximately 600 words and we're going to see how well this model is in providing me three concise takeaways based on the provided text. And you can see that it goes ahead and provides me three takeaways where it summarizes it and it gives me different critical points on the three takeaways. For example, you have the defense center on unforeseen circumstances and mitigation efforts. And you can see it also provides me a final consideration of this text that I provided. So this is definitely uh, deemed a pass. It does a great job in analyzing text and it gives you a good detailed, concise report on it. Now, next up, we're going to have it design an algorithm. So we're going to go into this chatbot and send this in. But essentially, we're going to have it uh, develop this algorithm to find the shortest path between two nodes in a graph and weighted edges. It's focusing on data structure as well as algorithms. And we're going to see if it uses the Bellman Ford for negative weights as well as Dijkstra's for non-negative weights. And these are two different algorithms that we're trying to see if the model uh, uses to solve this uh, completely and correctly and once it has generated i'll definitely showcase the response and this is just insane guys i'm, I'm kind of blown away because it takes a bit longer to give you the response but it always goes ahead and provides me the correct answer it took around 48 seconds to generate this response but you can see that it also generates the algorithm it also goes ahead and explains why it chose these two different algorithms and you can see that it was able to use the bellman ford optimization algorithm as well as the dynamic edge update algorithm so this is definitely deemed a pass now lastly we're going to have it explain the difference between irony sarcasm as well as providing an example for each so we're going to go ahead and send in this prompt but essentially this last prompt is assessing how well this model is in terms of explaining the difference between these different two concepts, we're going to focus on conceptual understanding. And you can see right away, it goes ahead and provides a summary, a definition, and a couple of examples, which talks about that irony is focusing on referring to a situation, a statement, or an outcome where the literal meaning is the opposite of what it is intended or expected. And then sarcasm is a form of irony, but it is specifically intended to mock or ridicule someone or something. So this is definitely deemed a pass. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. Overall, you can see that this model does a great job. It's remarkable, as you saw from the type of responses it was able to output. And it was able to even pass my own personal benchmark test. That needs a lot of updates. I need to make it even harder now because we're seeing better and better models being released on a smaller time frame, which is just insane. Huge props to the DeepSeek team, but this is just absolutely insane, guys. We have a new model that is beating the state-of-the-art models that we've seen for a lot of months like Claude Room by Sonnet as well as GPT-4 Omni and I definitely recommend that you take a look at this with all the links that I use in today's video this is a powerful model that you can get started with today and it's something that I definitely recommend that you use over anything because this is definitely something that is cheaper than the O1 model and it is basically on par with its performance. I'll leave all these links in the description. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon, follow me on Twitter, as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news as I'm constantly posting different types of videos on different AI topics. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for today's coder-based video on DSeq R1. But with that thought, guys, I'll see you guys fairly soon.